You will not remember this, uh, but uh, we last spoke, I'm going to say 13 years ago for Spiderwick. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm, I apologize. I don't recognize you. <laughs> that was the turning point, you know, the positive boost that we both needed our meeting in 2008. A hundred percent. And that movie, of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. So jumping right on in, if you could guest star on any TV series, what would you guest star and why? Oh, I always, I'm so bad at these questions. I will be better at all of your questions. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dreadful beginning, isn't it? No, I, Ted Lasso is the one that first came to mind. The reason why I'm bad at them is I feel like I say that and then that's my like favorite show ever and it's the only thing I ever watch. But it has been, re it has been really good uh, and it was perfect for this last year. And it reminds me of home and I think Jason is just brilliant in it. And so I'd, I'd love to do a part on that. Yeah, I think Ted Lasso is fantastic and it explains why it wins a lot of awards recently. Yes. Um, what movie or movies do you think you've seen the most? Um, I've been re-watching some Richard Curtis movies recently. I think because I've spent a lot of time out of the UK recently because, you know, we film The Good Doctor here in Vancouver. Um, I'm just always looking for you know, something that has a little bit of that reminder of home. And so those Richard Curtis kind of early romantic comedies have been have been something I've been going back to rewatch. Not to try and interject myself into this, but I got to interview Please him do. for that yesterday movie. And uh, uh, I was so over the moon to talk to him just because I'm such a fan. Yeah, no, the writing and it, and it holds up. Um, I mean, it holds up remarkably well, too. A hundred percent. Uh, what costumes or props do you think you've borrowed from set? Because I know you would have never stolen anything. <laughs> um, definitely have some things somehow that ended up staying with me from Bates Motel. Um, I've got Norman's manager badge, which it, it's not a secret. Like people know that I have these things. I think after five years on a TV show, they were like, fine, you can take the manager's badge if you really want it. <laughs> um, so I've got a couple of, a couple of things from that show. Uh, do you think you post too much on social media? I don't, I don't post anything. So hopefully that's not too much. <laughs> no, I, was, I was just teasing because you don't post on social media. I think there's one up that's got a blue tick. So people know that the people who pretend to be me aren't me, but there's nothing. I don't even have the password for it. So I wouldn't know how to log on and post anything. <laughs> yep, but, got it. but it just means that then people don't assume that I, um, I don't know, have said something that I actually haven't said. You have been acting for a very long time, since you, for a very long time. When did you realize that you wanted to act? I always enjoyed it as a kid. I guess, I guess as an adult, that decision came for me after, um, with, you know, going off to university, I took two years away um, at sort of 18 to 20, and then Bates Motel kind of brought me back into acting. Um, but, so yeah, that was kind of the moment where I thought, oh, this is something I want to do as an adult and making it this sort of active decision to do so, as opposed to, I didn't want it to be something I just ended up falling into having not really made that choice. You basically successfully made the transition from being like a child actor or a young actor to being an adult successful actor. Is there someone that you credit for helping you with this transition? I mean, I feel like you've set me up for the perfect answer to this question, Stephen, which is, of course, to say yourself, given that we apparently spoke <laughs> in 2008 and had a wonderful conversation and each of us have been lucky since. So, I mean, aside from you and that kind of real <laughs> pivotal moment in my life, um, probably my, my parents, my family, yeah, my, my brother and my parents. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with more. You're, of you're a very close. You're a very close fourth after the three of them, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm, I'll take it. I say thank you. Um, uh, you worked with uh, uh, Johnny Depp and Tim Burton when you were younger on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. When you think back on that, is there anything that you like vividly remember from the making of that movie? The sets were just incredible. Um, it's still... It's still hard to like wrap one's head around what they were, what we were able to build and what was genuinely there rather than just visual effects. They had the, you know, huge chocolate room with the chocolate river, it wasn't real chocolate, but you know, with a boat that actually would go down it and the chocolate 
waterfall thing that was at the end and it was it was genuinely like stepping into this magical world that they managed to to create um and i think being able to do that in reality um as opposed to having it as a visual effect was was kind of insane um and amazing to be a part of yeah uh yeah exactly um i really enjoy tour de pharmacy um, the Andy Samberg. Yes, I, that was I, fun. Thank you. Right. I, I'm a big fan of that. I think so. I'm a big fan. Uh, what was it like being a part of that? And is it one of those things where you just thoroughly enjoyed your time? Oh, yeah. I mean, Andy is obviously brilliant, Andy Samberg, and just getting to team up with him and have this this quirky love affair, I guess, as we rode off on our bikes was um, was <laughs> was a dream come true. <laughs> no, it was great fun to do to do something that was just entirely different and uh, and stupidly funny in the very best way. Um, and and it was yeah, it was it was a great. It was such a lovely group, and everyone was just up for trying new things and doing silly stuff. And yeah, yeah. For people that are watching this interview that have not seen it, um, make an effort. It's very funny, and it's only it's like 40, 45 minutes. It's nothing. Yeah. You know, um, so jumping into why I get to talk to you today for The Vault. Uh, I watched it last night. It's a super fun popcorn movie. Um, and one of the yes. things that I, I appreciated about the film is that the person who runs the bank is actually smart. Like, it's not one of these bumbling people that, you know, like he is legitimately, you know, he is a, he's just a smartly written character. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of the script? Yeah, um, well, thank you. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know, I think we're in a time where if, if you need people to be smart, I think, I think most people are smart and people end up making silly decisions or making the wrong decisions, but not because they're in, in somehow, you know, considered stupid or they don't have the, the intelligence. Um, and so I think part of what's fun about this is that it is a real you know, back of several people's wits, putting them against each other from my character's perspective, who's kind of fresh out of university and, you know, imbued with this sense of like, I can do it all and I've got, I'm really clever when he's just actually a kind of kid as well. And then coupled with someone, you know, at the head of the bank, as you say, who's like, who, who is smart and who isn't an idiot. And it makes it all the more challenging for us as we try and, as we try and rob the bank. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's like a great fun, um, you know, bank heist movie with some with some great, you know, beautiful action sequences and jumping in the water and getting on ladders and climbing buildings. And uh, it was very different to something I'd done before. And so it was it was exciting to be a part of it. Well, I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, obviously you your year is sort of set. You're very busy with your television mm -hmm. series. So what was it about this script and this project that said, I want to make this during my hiatus? Um, I guess it, it, I mean, it felt different. I was excited to play this different, you know, new character and getting to film in Madrid and, and do a film that was European was also an, an appeal. I did languages at university. I studied Spanish. Um, and so I went to Madrid and was there for sort of three, for in my third year, I was there for eight months living in Madrid. So in some ways it was a little bit of a return to home uh, or to the home that I'd once had as well, getting to make this, getting to make this film with some, really exceptional, uh, you know, Spanish producers and, and a brilliant director and also some of Spain's best actors. Did you find yourself, you mentioned you, you uh, lived there for eight months. Did you find yourself when you went back, going back to some of the same haunts you used to go to, like whatever coffee shop or things that you used to do just to be like, how has it changed? A little bit. I mean, the most bizarre thing was like, because we, the city of Madrid were very generous as we were, trying to film in some of their biggest, you know, locations and squares. And we were able to shut those down and, and shoot these incredible crowd sequences, which was a very different experience to when I was there as a student. And so it was kind of bizarre to like, you know, stand in the, in the middle of this square that I'd only really seen as a tourist and like from a distance um, amongst, you know, just one of many other people. And then all of a sudden to be there filming something uh, with it shut down with people watching us filming was was kind of, was weird. I can't imagine. Um, also, it has to be weird for you because of the success you've had on television. Um, uh, being in Madrid, I'm sure you're, you know, back when you were a student, no one knew who the hell you were. And now I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, people have, 
you know, it has to be weird being in another city like that and people uh, recognizing you. Yes, yeah, a little bit. And especially when you, especially, yeah, I guess just because my experience there was so very different to the, to the experience of going back and, and I was in a different place in my life. Um, in the movie, you have to do some stuff that I could never do from crawling across a ladder, <laughs> you know, like over this huge drop, uh, you know, using a rope between buildings. Like there's no fucking way I could do some of those things. And I know it's movie magic, but can you do, could do you think you could do these things in real life <laughs> or there is a 0% chance? I mean, I like to think I could. I think that's part of the fun of this film too, is that he's, He's not meant to be your, you know, stereotypical kind of action hero who gets it all right and who knows exactly what he's doing. Um, he's this young guy who is, you know, impulsive and when the pressure's on, he's still having fun um, and feels like he's at that point in his life when he has nothing to lose, which makes him do kind of crazy things. But he's not meant to be this He's by, he's by no means experienced. He's by no means the best at getting on a ladder or climbing a wall. And hopefully some of the, some of the fun of this film is, you know, people seeing this guy who is just um, a relatively normal guy uh, getting swept up in something that's much bigger than he is. Uh, you can be honest now and say you did the movie just because you wanted to talk to Liam about Game of Thrones for like a month straight. <laughs> Liam is brilliant. I had such fun with him. Uh, and he's so, he's terrific in this film too, as the kind of, the, the driving force really of the, uh, of, you know, the heist itself. Um, and the person who's the ringleader of, of everything. He's perfectly cast in it and is just, and wonderful to work with. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, you wanted to geek out about Game of Thrones. And he was in Game of Thrones, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, throw it out there. Um, when you think back on the making of the film though, is there like a day or two that you'll always remember? Um, I think probably one of them will just be that moment of, uh, we kind of use, I guess for people who haven't seen it, we use the, the sort of World Cup that goes on um, during the day that we're going to rob the bank as the perfect distraction in order to pull this off. And so just being there with, in, for that final big sequence was very memorable, running through the crowds. And, and I remember watching and having been in Spain when Spain won the World Cup. And so that was another kind of back to, you know, the, the sort of trip into nostalgia for me and, and into the memory bank. Um, and then I think aside from that, the, the vault is, um, is protected by this intricate water system um, to tease it in that way, I guess. And so getting to do sequences ultimately in the water, in this water tank that were all done very, very much for real uh, with some of the, the kind of best people in the business at doing that who had done, um, you know, many wonderful things before. So, so that was also brilliant. Yeah, this is stuff I could also never do. <laughs> no, we never, no. yeah, we, we survived, we survived okay. But there's this a surprising amount of water pressure was like thrown at us for us to, which is good, you know, you always want to be fighting against something, but it was, it, it was a little bit more real than perhaps I had originally realized it was going to be. Yeah, the, the fear on your face is not acting. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, so uh, jumping into something else, um, one of the things, a lot of actors are lucky to get one successful television series that lasts more than one season. And you've been fortunate, you know, Bates Motel was very successful. Now you're on another very successful series. Um, have you thought about playing the lottery? <laughs> That's a good point. I feel like I, although in some ways I feel like I've won it several times already that maybe my, you know, surely my luck is going to have to run out at some point. But, um, but yeah, I, I feel very fortunate, especially just the timing was, it felt at the time and still does too good to be true to finish Bates Motel. And then a couple of months later, be, you know, filming something else. And it was three days between finishing Bates Motel and the good doctor coming along. Um, and having to make that decision. So it, it, it doesn't quite seem real that it's, that it's happened, I guess. Uh, I believe Daniel Day Kim was very instrumental in getting the good doctor uh, made in America. Um, have you, do you send him like birthday cards or birthday presents uh, every year for helping you know, to get this show on the air and giving you such a great role? 
or I mean, what what do you do to thank him? Well, I I, I was wondering what the awe was going to be, or do you just ignore him? And <laughs> no, um, he's wonderful, and he got it, it was great fun in season two because he got to come in at the end and play this part of um, of a doctor on the show for four episodes, the sort of brilliant arc at the end of the season, and so um, of course we're you know we will always be grateful to him for for finding the show and wanting to develop it in the US from the very beginning. Um, and also just, you know, it was, it was wonderful to get to work with him as an actor. Well, something that I think a lot of people don't know about the making of TV, like I'm sure there's a lot of people that watch the series and don't really understand what goes on behind the scenes, the long hours, what it's like to really learn all the dialogue. Um, for you, I'm just curious, has it gotten any easier to learn the dialogue that you have to deliver each day? Or is it sort of like, you know, it's rinse and repeat, like I get home at night and I got to spend an hour or two trying to learn? It takes me a, while, a surprising amount of time um, to learn the lines and get them into my head. Also, Sean speaks quite quickly and has quite a good control of his medical jargon, and I'm not in any way medically <laughs> adept, and so that takes a bit of extra effort too. Um, sometimes, sometimes now in season four, there are words that you have used many times, and so they become, they sort of come more naturally to you, and they roll off the tongue a little bit quicker. But then also that can be confusing at times because we'll be ordering, you know, tests like a CT, EEG and something else. And then in one episode, you'll order that. And then the other episode, you'll order something very similar, but with a slight tweak. And I find myself reverting to the one from the previous episode instead of the correct te te uh, tests for the current episode that we're on. So in some ways, learning stuff well is a blessing and, and sometimes a curse. Uh, where are you in, this, in the filming process uh, of this season? We're about three quarters of the way through now, season four. So a couple more months to go in Vancouver, yeah. Have you thought about what you want to do in your upcoming hiatus or are you just being like, I am taking a break? Uh, it'll be nice to get back home to the UK um, and then... And then hopefully we'll have another, you know, usually by now we would have finished the season. And so the break would have been a little bit longer. And if we're lucky to get another season of the show and, and come back again, then the break will probably a bit, be a bit shorter this year. Yeah, I was wondering about that because uh, generally people start filming in July or August. And that's going to be near where you normally, I guess, where you might be wrapping. So, I mean, could it mean that you're going to have like two weeks off? I don't know. I'm, I mean, maybe. <laughs> the, the good thing at least is that, um, it, I mean, it's, it, it's a lot dependent on the writing too. And, you know, David Shaw, our wonderful main writer and showrunner, has to have some time at least to finish one season and wrap his head around what he wants to do with our, with our potential fifth season. So um, I, I think there'll be a little break of, of some kind, yeah. I've spoken to a lot of writers and showrunners and they all talk about how when the season begins, they'll often have, you know, they'll have the arc of the season and maybe four or five scripts done and outlines of others. You know, you got to get ahead because you can't just keep writing week in and week out without being like ahead, just the way the production works. Yeah, there's exactly the sort of bigger pieces are always hopefully in place at the start of the season, but but when you film over this course of sort of eight, nine months and there's a couple of months off, it, it's impossible to write a whole season in the break that you would have. So there's a requirement to kind of just keep writing as the show goes on. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you did a series called Leonardo am I, or am I wrong about this? No, this is this is correct. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure. So um, I obviously haven't seen it yet. Um, what can you tease about that project? Uh, yeah, so it's about it's about the life of Leonardo da Vinci. I guess it's about you know the um, stripping back his enigmatic facade um, and looking to try and you know discover who the man actually was. And I think our present day understanding of him or is is in some ways non-existent. I think when you think of Leonardo da Vinci, you don't think of an image of him, you think of Mona Lisa, you think of The Last Supper, and this series sort of follows him as he builds these famous paintings. Um, but at the same time, you know, stripping, stripping back who he was to reveal this outsider, uh, you know, an illegitimate child, a gay man who's struggling in many ways in his, in his life, and hopefully that gives us a little bit more of an understanding about his art too, and, and allows us to appreciate it in a new way. 
Uh, and that's a project, it's the first one that I've been producing through my production company. Um, and so it's exciting in that way. And I get to play a small part in the, in, in the show as well. I, I'm obviously like everyone else fascinated by his paintings, his drawings, everything about that, you know, that man's life is fascinating. What did you take away? What like Was there anything that surprised you about his life or anything you learned about him that you were like, my God, this has to be in the series? I mean, I think one of the things that stood out and I hadn't really thought about it in this way before the show was that he was equally adept in, you know, the arts and the sciences and was, you know, I think there's there's many anecdotes that 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 we know about him, but one of them is, you know, he had these early designs for helicopters and didn't have the some of the science to be able to pull it off, but knew that that's a way that you could get something up in the air. Um, and I think in today's world, for whatever reason, we've come to think that art and science have to be, you know, on the opposite sides of a spectrum and that you have to choose one or the other. And even from school or going off to university, you have to kind of pursue one or the other. Uh, and I think it's fascinating to look at someone who shows that you can do both and that you don't have to necessarily feel forced down one of those paths or the other. Um, and that there are similarities there too. It's not, uh, science isn't, you know, all dry and sort of mechanical um, and clear cut and art isn't always the most, you know, always have to be flowery and, and, and wishy-washy. Uh, how many episodes is it? It's eight episodes, so it's an eight part miniseries and Aidan play, Turner plays Leonardo and he's brilliant in it. I mean, he's an okay actor, come on. You know? <laughs> yeah. um, is it one of these things though, when you're developing things nowadays, is everyone asking you about, you know, I'm not sure if this is a limited series or a series, how much are, when you're developing, is everyone sort of saying, well, can you do a multiple seasons on this? Or, you know what I mean? Like, what is it like behind the scenes? Yeah, I think there is, um, I think there's a desire. I think the preferable thing is to have a show that, that could return and could come back. Um, but, and, and this does have that potential, hopefully. Um, it's, it's literally just come out in Italy, which is the first place that it's launched and has done really well. So everyone's optimistic that there might be, there might be more we can explore in, uh, in Leonardo da Vinci's world. You mentioned this is the first thing you, you put out through your production company. What is it like trying to develop things while also working full time the way you work? I would imagine it's, it can be a struggle. It's exciting too, though. It feels like making the most of this opportunity. Um, it's not just me. Uh, the head of development at the company, Claire Londi, is is wonderful. Uh, and so I'm very lucky to be able to, to work with her and collaborate with her in terms of finding new projects and, and developing things. Um, and the majority of our focus, you know, up until now has definitely been on the TV side and our deal with Sony is for that. Um, but we're, you know, we'd also love to, to, to do films and um, yeah, and do features further down the line. When you are acting on set, how much are you looking at the lens and what the DP is doing because down the road you want to direct more and how much mm -hmm. are you sort of like, I can only focus on the acting at this moment. I can't be worried about the framing, if you will. I think I've always had a natural curiosity to that on, in terms of being aware of that side of things. Um, and I And I also think that I mean, every actor is different, but I, I've always found there is a, a collaboration that you're always undertaking with the, with the camera um, and with other members of the crew whenever you're filming. You're not really, even though we would like to pretend and you want to pretend that you're just having this scene with one other person or however many people are in the room, the reality is very different. Uh, and I think I, I've always found it exciting to know where the camera is and what, what the camera movement is trying to do um, and feel like that can then help inform the decisions that I make as well as, as an actor. Uh, but as you say, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to direct more and um, I've been lucky to direct several episodes on this show and direct on, on Bates Motel as well. And uh, I'd love to continue to explore that side of things. My, my last thing for you, um, and I thank you for giving me so much time. When you are stepping in to direct on an episode of The Good Doctor or when you were doing Bates Motel, Obviously, there's a format to these shows, but I'm sure that you also want to put your own spin on it. So how much are you thinking, can I get like a one-er that's going to be like three <laughs> minutes, like 
How much are you thinking about trying to add like a, a camera movement that maybe hasn't been done before? And how much do you sort of have to fit into the format that has come, you know, that has been established? I mean, you're definitely, you're definitely fitting into, you know, a style of the show that has been established before. Um, I, I don't really approach it in terms of thinking, can I get this cool shot in for the sake of it? I think I look at the script and then of course think, are there ways that we can help tell the story through, you know, tell the story visually. Uh, and I think there's always ways to do that. I think even on a, you know, a medical procedural like ours, um, there are ways that you can help tell the story by um, through camera movement and through moments of silence, rather than just feeling that there's a necessity to get, you know, everyone's close up and then move on. On that note, I have to hit stop. I'm just going to say um, really great talking with you again. Lovely to chat with you too. I was going to say, and thank you for giving me all the credit on your career. <laughs> I really appreciate it. No, I'm, of I'm course. Kidding. I wish you nothing but the best and thank you so much. And I really had a fun time watching the movie. Thank you. And hopefully we'll chat again before however many years it's been, 13 years. Hopefully we'll, we'll chat sooner than that.